morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. My name is Paul Dean, and I'll be your moderator for today's class. And I'd like to welcome everyone to another class presented by the Arts Branch. This is a school and not a church, not a employee with any religious organization. The school is a nonprofit, non denominational religious and scientific research organization dedicated to showing proof of the existence of Yahweh our Elohim and the operation of his eternal purpose, pattern, and plan operating throughout eternity to this present day. The school was established as a result of a divine vision and revelation given to our founder, Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, in the state of Ohio in the year 1931. Incorporated in the state of California in the year 1958. And since that time, have established branch schools throughout the United States and various parts of the world. The Air Force class was established in the year 2000. This time, I'd like to introduce the Dean of the Air Force class, Dr. Bonnie Snyder, and the President, Dr. Paul Cook. In the school, we use a true, correct, and original name and title of the Father, the Word of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as they are contained in the original Hebrew text. The true name of the Heavenly Father is Yahweh. This has been improperly substituted with Lord. The true title of the word or son is Elohim. This has been improperly substituted with God. The name of the Holy Spirit manifest in or out of a physical body is Yahshua. This has been erroneously substituted by Jesus. Lord and God are titles and not names. The Apostle Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, tells us in 1 Corinthians 8 and 5, there are Lord's many and God's many. We now know that each Lord must have a name and each God must have a name also. Elohim is a title, but unlike Lord or God, Elohim is a divine title. And that means Elohim is a title that our creator chose for himself. Jesus is a name that is an erroneous name. In a minor investigation on your part, into a good dictionary or encyclopedia, would prove that neither the Hebrew, Greek, nor Latin languages have any letters or characters in their alphabet able to produce a sound that is made by the letter J. Never was there a letter J in our own English language until some 1,400 years after the Messiah died. Therefore, making such names as Jesus and Jehovah impossible rendering for the true and original name of our Heavenly Father and Son. And Christ is a title just like Lord and God. Yahweh is pure spirit. And in this state, he is incomprehensible and inscrutable. He is the ultimate source, substance, limits, and bounds of everything. We have Yahweh in his pure spirit state, symbolized on his chart as a cloud. Yahweh is not a cloud. He merely chose a cloud to symbolize himself because the cloud has no particular or descriptive shape or form. We've drawn the cloud all the way around the edges of the chart to show you that everything on the chart is within the cloud. In like manner, everything in the universe abides within the pure spirit state of Yahweh. Yahweh, knowing man could not perceive with him in his pure spirit state, took on shape and form right within himself as element. And this is the word for son. A super incorporeal being that is having the shape and form of a man, but without flesh or blood. This form could only be seen in a divine vision and understood in divine revelation. Later on, the self same spirit manifests in a physical body and walked the earth plane as Joshua the Messiah, whom the world called Jesus Christ. There's only been one name given unto salvation, and we must know that name. So, the simple yet intelligent question that we should ask ourselves is what was the name of our Savior? During the time that he walked the airplane. And a further understanding of this name and title may be had by reading the preface to the Holy Name Bible. Also, in the school, we teach by the divine pattern of the universe. And it's called the divine pattern because it is Yahweh's pattern. After Yahweh led the children of Israel out of Egypt, he called Moses on top of Mount Sinai and he showed him the tabernacle pattern in the vision. And he instructed Moses to build one exactly like it in the wilderness of Sinai. The pattern consists of a most holy place, a holy place, and a core roundabout. These three compartments making up the one tabernacle pattern. In this school, we show proof how that everything in the universe is made and operates according to the structure of the threefold tabernacle pattern and how that absolutely nothing escapes a pattern. And also in the school, we have 10 constitutional aims or objectives, and they are as follows. First is to help you find and know Yahweh, our Elohim, as he really is and actually exists. Second is to form a nucleus of universal brotherhood of humanity in Yahshua the Messiah without the distinction of race, nationality, creed, sex, cash, or color. Third is to investigate the unexplained fair law or the so-called law of nature and the powers latent in man. 
for to encourage and promote the study of the scriptures, comparative religion, psychology, philosophy, modern practical and occult science. This is to extirpate current superstition, skepticism, and ignorance. Six is to learn, know, and understand the operation of Yahweh's eternal purpose operating throughout the dispensation of the Seventh is to discern and avoid being and deceived by Lucifer, the serpent, the devil, the dragon, or Satan and his demons operating the mystery of iniquity on earth through the dispensation of time. Eighth is to earnestly contend for the common salvation in faith, which was once delivered under the soldier children of Yahweh. Ninth is to make known the Yahweh from the beginning, ordain there is no other name given among men whereby man can be saved, saving the name of Yahshua the Messiah. And tenth is to inherit eternal life now in the kingdom of Yahshua the Messiah with the hope of a mortal glorification in, 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 the, in the new earth. Our watchword is peace and our soul is to the truth. This time we ask the class to dedicate a prayer by Allison. In the scripture reading today is the second Corinthians, the tenth chapter, and that will be read by Dr. Berkeley. Good morning. Good morning. Let us all bow our hearts and minds and thank Joshua again for allowing us to enter into this room and being privy to this great teaching that we have been introduced to. And let him thank us or let him let him thank let us thank him for every soul that has walked in this door and ask him that he edifies every single one. And with that, let us say hallelujah. Hallelujah. The scripture reading is 2 Corinthians, the 10th chapter. I'll be reading from the Holy Day Bible, containing the Holy Day version of the Old and New Testaments, critically compared with ancient authorities and various manuscripts. Revised by A.B. Trainer, the Scripture Research Association. 2 Corinthians. Now I saw myself beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of the Messiah. Who in presence and base among you, but being absent and bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am at present with this, that confidence, where, wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as if we walked according to the flesh. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but mighty through Elohim in the pulling down of strongholds of rebels, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Yahweh and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of the Messiah and being in readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Do you look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trusted himself, that he is of the Messiah, let him of himself think this again, that as he is of the Messiah, even so are we of the Messiah. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which I we have given us for edification and not for the destruction, I should not be ashamed, that I may not seem as if I would terrify you by letters. For his letters say they, are weighty and powerful, but his bodily presence is weak and his speech contemptible. Let such a one think this, that such as we are in word by letters when we are absent, such will, be, will we be also indeed when we are present. For we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they, measuring themselves by themselves, and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. But we will not boast of the things beyond our measure, but according to the measure of the rule, which Yahweh hath distributed to us, a measure to reach even unto you. For we boast not ourselves beyond our measure, as though we reach not unto you. For we are come as far as to you also in preaching the glad tidings of the Messiah, not boasting of things without our measure, 
that is, of other men's labors, but having hope, when our faith is increased, that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly, to preach the glad tidings in the regions beyond you, and not to boast in another man's field of endeavor made ready for our hand. But he that glorifieth, let him glory in Yahweh. For not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom Yahweh commendeth. Second Corinthians 10. Hello again, everybody. Everybody online. We appreciate our visiting brethren. We'd like to call upon for our first speaker today. Thank you. Okay. Good evening. Good morning, everyone. I'm used to evening. Okay, start reading verse five of it. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Yahweh and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of the Messiah. See, we want our thoughts to the obedience of the Messiah. Mm -hmm. That's what we're looking for. And uh, something that's been on, get Isaiah 55, 8 and 9. See, one thing that you've got to realize, our thoughts were not his thoughts. We mm -hmm. do want them to be the obedience of Yahweh's thoughts. Mm -hmm. is yeah. Now, the moderator mentioned these names, Yahweh, Elohim, and Yahshua. Now, they are the true names of the Creator. Okay, so read Isaiah 55. Isaiah 55 and 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith Yahweh. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. Okay, now we, we tried to do this. And this is one of the answers that we get when we try to preach. It doesn't matter what you call me. <laughs> oh boy, it's hard to get paid on the floor. Okay. Doesn't matter what you call them. How many people have had that response when you try to preach the truth? Okay, doesn't matter what you call them. He knows what you're talking about. And you could just go down to the last verse of that. See, now these are people's thoughts. They're commending themselves for their own thoughts. So I think the last verse. In Isaiah? No, the, the scripture reading. Oh, the scripture. Yeah. For not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom Yahweh commendeth. Now he's going to commend the ones that are obedient to his thoughts, not your own thoughts. Okay? So now, you, you can go to John 4, 24, and then I'm going to need Hosea, the fourth chapter also. But it doesn't matter what you call them. See, I'm going to work on it. We're going to find out Yahweh's thoughts yeah. of this, not this statement. John 4 24. Yeah. Yahweh is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. See, there's a must. Worship Yahweh in spirit and in truth. These names. Our truth. Yeah, I was going to say name These names, <clears throat> Lord Jehovah, God, Jesus Christ, are actually lies. 
plain and simple. You can find it in the dictionary. You can find it wherever you want. Now, the ones that are going to worship it are not. I, I've also heard the statement that Jesus has done so much for them. I'm sorry, the last statement we read in the 10th chapter of 1 Corinthians, you're commending yourself and your own thoughts. Jesus doesn't do anything for anybody. It's a false name. You're associating that name with the one that died on the cross, and it's really easy to find in a good dictionary that J did not exist in her English language until after the first King James Version was pulled out. Look at the 1611 King James Version. You will find there's not a single J in it. Okay. You don't have the name Jesus in our first English Bible that we have. I don't know. Did the Catholics come out with the English Bible first? Or they were around the same time that that two Bibles came out. But I mean, translated into English. There might have been the Vulgate Bible, or it might have been close around there. But this, this is about time. It's still, we didn't have no James. The James version is 11. It is a false name. It was created through all various different changes. So, okay, we got to worship him in spirit and in truth. And we want to know his thoughts on the matter. Is where we, what is this? It's the 1611 page. Yeah, 1611, the New Testament. Yeah, it's got some um, I E S V S Christ. That's that's what they got for the um, Jesus. It didn't exist in their first Bible. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Can we get it? We got it on the camera. Can people see that? <laughs> if I did this, can you see through there? Can you see that? Yep. All right, right next to the Christ. Okay. So we can do that. And then that's in our first Bible. Um, okay, start at one in four. Hosea four. Hosea four one. Hear the word of Yahweh, you children of Israel. For Yahweh has a controversy with the inhabitants of the land, because there is no truth, nor mercy, nor knowledge of Yahweh. In the land. See, they're having a controversy. This is Israel who's having a controversy. Mm -hmm. These were his, his picked out people from uh, in the old covenant. These were the Jews, Israel. He's got a controversy because there is no truth or knowledge of no mercy, uh, nor knowledge of Yahweh. Knowledge of Yahweh in the land. <laughs> See, that's what we're trying to learn down here. What thus saith Yahweh, not our own thoughts. We've got to be elevated out of our own thoughts. And our own thoughts are not true. They're not the truth about the Creator. I mean, statements like it doesn't matter what you call. Jesus has done so much. Oh, that's a key thing. Isn't that another one other people heard? Okay, well, I'll get Exodus 9, 16. This was not, Yahweh was not a Hebrew name. The Hebrews used it. But when Yahweh introduced this name to people, it was a universal name right from the start. Okay. Exodus 9, 16. And in very deep for this cause have I raised thee up, for to show with me my power, and that my name may be declared throughout all the earth. Yeah, he did a phenomenal thing in Egypt, really taking Pharaoh down to make this a, a phenomenal situation where the whole entire world was looking at what That's happened right. between Israel and the owl. He made this so phenomenal so his name would be declared throughout all the earth. That's not the Hebrew name. That's a universal name right from the start. Now, <clears throat> He had given Moses this name, but get Exodus 6 3. Exodus 6 and 3. And I appeared to Abraham, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob by the name of El Shaddai. In the King James Version says God Almighty. But by my name, Jehovah, in the King James Version, was I not known to them. See, we know Jehovah don't work. There is no J. No J, no Jesus, no Jehovah. Okay, so now he did 
give the name until, like I said, in the third chapter, of, until Moses came down. He was known as the Almighty Provider. And there's a witness in the earth. Who were first born? What do our mother and father do? Oh, this is mommy. This is daddy. We know our parents also by a title. But now when you come down to, uh, you get a little older, you learn their names and say your mom works at the school. There's a emergency at home. You're going to call the school and say, is mom there? <laughs> You're not really going to be able to find the mom. You're going to need a name. So there comes a point in time when you, and you go in here, introduce your friends. This is mom. Because he's not mom to everybody else. You got to differentiate. And just like, uh, we can get that first Corinthians 8 and 5 where they talk about Lord's money and God's money. You know, that, that's even a lot of issues. Yeah. First Corinthians 8 and 5. For for though there be that are called gods, whether in heaven or in earth, as there be gods many and lords many. Yeah, see, the thing is, and now we now know that each lord must have a name and each god must have a name. Why? So we can differentiate them. Now, I'll tell you, they had, he had in um, Jeremiah 23, I'm going to need 25. But see, now Israel, his chosen people, he was talking about having a controversy. And I am going to stay in Hosea 4. I'm going to go back. Okay. But um, Jeremiah 23, 23 25. 25. I have heard what the prophet said. That prophesied lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesied lies? Yea, they are prophets of the deceit of their own heart which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. See, there's no truth or knowledge of Yahweh in the land, because uh, Isaiah 22, uh, 18. <laughs> All right, see, so now what we read, there's no truth or, or mercy or knowledge of Yahweh in the land. Now here's these people, Causing Israel to forget his name yeah. for Baal. Now, Baal, when you look at it, it's actually, I think it's the Hebrew name is Lord. Mm -hmm. And Baalai means my Lord. Mm -hmm. So he's causing people to forget their name for mm -hmm. Lord. Mm -hmm. Now, when we get it translated down the line because of what Israel did back then, is the reason that there are so many people called the Lord today. So Yahweh didn't care for the cause in which he would prefer to visit the Lord. So Yahweh doesn't like that. That's his thoughts. In the Okay, and uh, so what did I answer? Uh, Isaiah 42 and 8. I am Yahweh, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. See, that's Yahweh. That's his name. He will not give glory to another. So we don't want to be using Jehovah, Lord, God. We don't want to be giving glory to them. We don't want to be giving glory to Jesus. You know, in any damn fashion or form. Okay, so I need some water. So I think I'm going to turn you back. <laughs> okay, so now. I want to go to uh, reread John 4 24 again. I want to stress this point. I want to stress this word must. Listen for it when he reads. <laughs> John 4 24. Yahweh is spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. Must. This is a must. This is his idea of how he's supposed to worship him. 
Now, he had a controversy with children in Israel because there was no truth or knowledge of Yahweh in the land. Now, jump down to six. Uh, second Corinthians? No, no, that's uh, six verses. Uh, there. Uh, Hosea. 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 Okay. Thanks, sir. We'll get there. <laughs> My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Mm -hmm. Because thou hast rejected knowledge, I will also reject thee, that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing that thou hast forgotten the law of Yahweh, I will also forget thy children. Okay, see? Somebody who's rejecting knowledge, this truth of Yahweh, that he had a problem with people not having knowledge of him in the land and the truth. I just told you some truth. You can check it out. It is really easy. You could look up uh, in the dictionary, you could look up tetragrammaton. You know, that means four letters, and it's the four letters of the name Yahweh. And that will tell you the same thing they told you in Jeremiah, how they tried to make them forget the name yeah. because they thought it was too sacred to pronounce. That is their thoughts too. It was too sacred to pronounce. Why did he declare it throughout a, a whole entire earth that he didn't want people to pronounce? It is goofy. Okay, so now, if you reject knowledge, I shall also reject thee. So the thing is, this, this mm -hmm. knowledge that I, I'm telling you, it can do something for you. It really can do mm -hmm. something. I mean, it's a start or an introduction to the truth. Watch your heavenly father. And let me tell you, it could give you peace. It could give you comfort and joy. Mm -hmm. Did I call for anything else? Or no, I don't think it is. And quoted Hosea 2.16. Okay, if, if you got that, you, you can read that. And it shall be at that day, saith Yahweh, that thou shalt call me Isha, and shalt call me no more Bailai. Okay, now the your Bibles, they actually change these into English words. But see, this is an older Bible, and they left words in there that aren't English. Now, why would somebody do that? Now, I'll tell you, he, in this verse, is telling you he doesn't want you to call a certain thing. Right. Okay? Now, throughout the whole entire book, they have plastered the word Lord. Okay? And then they come up to this verse, and they're going to translate it. Now, read it with the English, with the trunk. And it shall be at that day, saith Yahweh, that thou shalt call me my husband, and shalt call me no more my Lord. Okay, so now the translators got this word, I and mean, I would call that slothfulness. Instead of going back and trying to change the false word Lord, <laughs> they just says, oh, let's just throw the Hebrew words yeah. in here instead of us. Uh, uh, it's not actually Hebrew words, it's the Hebrew transliteration. So you would pronounce the Hebrew word. Right? Did I get that right? Yeah. So you're pronouncing the, the Hebrew word, even though it's English letters, because Hebrew is a consonantal language and yeah, so they wouldn't understand it if they were not in that and you had to pronounce it somehow. Okay, I am gonna need Exodus uh, 20 and 7. But see, he doesn't want you to call him Lord. No, he did two things. That's right. In 25, he says, I'm causing my people to forget my name, the Lord. Mm -hmm. See? They left Baal in that one, too. Okay. Exodus 20 and 7. Thou shalt not take the name of Yahweh, thy Elohim, in vain. For Yahweh will not hold him guiltless that taketh yeah. his name in vain. See, so, you know, Yahweh's not going to hold. Anybody guiltless, you're going to be guilty if you take his name in vain. I mean, I don't think you want to be guilty, now he says. Okay, so now the word vain means void of no value, 
worthless. Mm -hmm. um, you can look this up in a dictionary. Mm -hmm. Unless somebody has one, we could read the definitions because it would be cool to listen to that out of the dictionary. Vain. Having or showing undue excessive pride in appearance. Oh, that's an adjective. To no end, without success or result, irreverent. That does good. No value. That's it. No value. Worthless. Worthless. Uh, empty. Empty, foolish, futile, futile. Okay, see, so the thing <clears throat> is, they means all these things. Now, has anybody ever gotten a gift and you go, oh, oh what a great gift, and then throw it up in the class because you really didn't like it? Mm -hmm. you, <laughs> you know, I mean, everybody's got to hear that, and then you, you pretend it's so great that you throw it up in the corner. Now, that is not being used, it's not being seen. And you just put it out of your mind. It's made worthless. It's made of no value. That's what they did to his name. They caused the people to try to forget his name for long. And like I said, you know, years later, you get that box out. Like I said, you literally a lot of times forget about it because you don't feel right throwing it away because you think it's an offense to the person who gave it to you. And so, <clears throat> We don't want to ignore his name. We don't want to make it worthless. We want to declare it. Okay? We want to praise Yahweh. I'm going to read Isaiah 52, uh, 6, I think. But we want to praise his name because of the fact that when he gave it, and I also going to read Exodus, I'm just going to go straight to 315. But uh, we want to praise his name. We want to declare it. Because it doesn't matter what you call him. We already told Isaiah 42, 6. Oh, it is my name. I don't want to give glory to any of them. Okay. Isaiah 52 and 6. <clears throat> Therefore, my people shall know my name. Therefore, they shall know in that day that I am he that does speak. Behold, it is I. See? Do you want to be one of Yahweh's people or do you want to be one of these other false gods? Yeah. I mean, they really don't have substance. I mean, throughout the book, Yahweh put these false god, gods to shame. I think it's the 18th chapter, 18th chapter of 1 Kings, you can read it on your own, mm -hmm. where there was 400 prophets of Baal yeah. mm -hmm. and only one of Yahweh, and he overcome them. He reckoned. And Yahweh took Egypt, who was the strongest nation in the world, and just squashed them, basically. You want to be one of Yahweh's people. And he says, one of the things that about his people, they're going to know his name. Now, knowing is clearly perceiving, understanding, and seeing. This is knowing. It's a it's you can't. It's like must. You got to yeah. know his name. It's not like, okay, yeah, I know his name. It's not knowing his name. We're going to know his real name. And that's what we want to know. Did I call for something? Else? Exodus 3.15. And Yahweh said, moreover, unto Moses, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, Yahweh, the Elohim of your fathers, Elohim of Abraham, the Elohim of Isaac and the Elohim of Jacob has sent me unto you. This is my name forever. This is my memorial unto all generations. See, he says Yahweh Elohim. Now, Elohim is the title, but he says Yahweh Elohim. This is my name forever. These are his thoughts. Yep. And a memorial unto just that generation. All generations. Oh, all generations? Yeah. Okay, I think that includes us. Yeah. We are a generation. Yeah. <laughs> that all encompasses all. Mm -hmm. 
So that's his name forever. All right. And um, yeah, like, like it says, you know, read that five again of our scripture. Verse five. Ten and five. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of Yahweh. Against the knowledge of Yahweh. You want the knowledge of Yahweh. You don't want man's concepts, theories, and opinions. Right. You don't want to honor You want to honor Yahweh. You want to honor Yahweh. Okay, keep on going. And bring it, bringing it into captivity, every thought to the obedience of the Messiah. See, we want our thoughts to the obedience. And what we've learned down in this class is bringing our thoughts. We're throwing out the false names, bringing us into deep obedience to our Heavenly Father and what He desires and wants. He wants His name declared, just like He declared it throughout all the earth back then. We want to declare it throughout all the earth for present times. Okay, I think that's all uh, I'm finished. So I thank you <laughs> for your time and I appreciate the opportunity. Yep. All right, thank you, Marie. Thank you, Joel. Uh, for our second speaker, I'd like to call upon Kim Kalecki. I probably won't be up a whole long, long time. <laughs> But I did enjoy the train of thought that Marie was running for us. It's a beautiful gift. <laughs> I don't feel that is one of my gifts. <laughs> Yashua definitely feeds me. I don't go without. Part of it, I think, is my personality type. And I do mention that when I'm up here often. But he throws me more soul upon more soul, and I never go hungry. I find my times often listening to a tape. YouTube has been wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> Great nutrients added to the meal that we're able to come down and get on a weekly basis off the plates. Mm -hmm. And Excuse me. One of the things that Yahshua recently laid out for me oh, there's many things. <laughs> there's many things with other brethren right now that are on the floor. Just like last week, I appreciated the testimony of Norm. Is that? And Paul. And Paul. <laughs> and George. I don't know. And each and every one of us. Because we are the children too. And Joshua has laid out this creation and he shows us each of our brother and The children of Israel must be saved. Mm -hmm. Another brother, Jonah, not worthy, being saved. Mm -hmm. First Corinthians 15. And this wasn't where I was going because you can see my smorgasbord <laughs> of different thoughts that Joshua gives me, and I write them down because. I, I know Holly speaks of trouble with her memory, and I don't know a whole lot about her mental, <clears throat> medical condition or anything, but I don't know a whole bit. Like, 
maybe it's because I'm 56 and these things are starting to go because they're going in other areas. But um, anyway, that's First got a couple things. of things going on here. And if you end up getting a smorgasbord from me, well, that's what you get. Yes. <laughs> and then maybe somebody else will clean it all up and top it off with whipped cream and dessert. <laughs> 15 and 1. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received and where you stand. Now, we didn't even know what gospel was before we came into this class. I mean, in the books, the book, it'll say the gospel according to Matthew. The gospel had flipped a few a couple of them because we're on... We're on TV. We're all on yeah. some kind of a star. <laughs> <laughs> the gospel according to Mark or St. Mark. Gospel. Pretty much all. Yeah. Yeah. It'll go through the gospel. The gospel, gospel according, according, to according to so and so. According to so and so. Yeah. According to so and so. Mm -hmm. But in First Corinthians, start over. This tells you what the gospel is. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also you have received, and where you stand. By which also you are saved, if you keep in memory what I have preached unto you, unless you believed in vain. Now, you're saved in this, if you keep it in memory, or if you, or did you believe in vain? Now, I have to tell you, I thoroughly enjoyed hearing from some of the brethren that have taken the journey and the truck to come and visit with us that I've actually listened to on YouTube, um, Reba was here not too long ago, and Shannon, Shannon yeah, Shannon. now there's another woman, the R, no, Rhonda, Rhonda, and the joy, <laughs> the joy that was just, let me say released from her while we just, you know, and I'm not saying that we all don't have it, but it was just evident. And then Reba, she's like, do you care? Do you care? Because <laughs> if you care, and you can't care on your own either. Um, you can't care to know what these names are. If it's just there's two mysteries in operation do you care that you have a seat down here do you care that when you can't get here that little spark is put within you to tune in for the 10 minutes you might absorb something do you care when your child is broke down in Old Fallen, Missouri with a zip code of 63366 and an area code of 636 and you're telling her, pray, <laughs> breathe, Yahshua does deliver. <laughs> Do you care when your child has been in class in a long time and she can't to see over there? You do care. And these aren't physical witnesses of Kim or Rob's daughter coming or. Do you care that you were in a prison in an area called Lakeville? You were in the lake. Do you care that he brought you out of the lake? Do you care that he brought you back after a tractor rolled over you and after a heart attack and after lightning twice so you just don't catch on too quick? <laughs> <laughs> They're not about Paul and Paul and George and Kim and Bethany and Rob and <clears throat> They're about First Corinthians, and we each get to go through something to reinforce the gospel. 
because the spirits poured out this day. And I can't but help. I love Hebrews, 11th chapter. And you know, I cried before class last week and I knew it was, well, there's a couple of reasons. My neighbor's dog cries with his left out tied to a tree and that gets me going. <laughs> you know, I, I'm concerned about my daughter coming back from California because A, she doesn't want to be here. <laughs> You know, the, the dead, the cold, the middle of winter. She's going to be without her husband because he's the point. None of this is about my child, but it's like, Yahshua is just like our beloved Pearl. Mm -hmm. It was noted about her love for others. Mm -hmm we're able to be in tune to this beautiful spirit that's been gifted to us because we're not good of ourselves but we're able to see these things because we have an eye of understanding and we've been given the gift to have Yahshua put his spirit within us after fulfilling and i was in, listening to a tape this morning and it was a beautiful witness to me one of the brethren said and there are many other lectures you're not going to get it all today there's so this we're talking about a spirit that is infinite mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's so many topics that if I don't spark your interest, if Marie didn't come back, somebody else has something else. When you go to a dinner, you don't like every plate that's served. But I was listening to a witness today that was beautiful. And I'm sure it's been brought up before. How that when we, well, we learned today about the letter J in Jesus, and it just couldn't have been. And they're totally different uh, identities mm -hmm. with Jesus coming into institute. Well, here's just a common sense. <laughs> if Jesus is coming to John to be baptized, baptizing was already going on. It wasn't an institute thing. It didn't start with Jesus. So there's reinforcement for us that it was a fulfill item. Mm -hmm. And it's beautiful that your creator takes care of it because the word institute isn't even in the Bible. Just like he takes care of many other things with, he tells you, uh, Call me Ishi no more Baalai, meaning Lord. And the whole world uses Lord because it doesn't matter to them what they call him. So that was just a beautiful <coughs> egg from my basket this morning or reinforcement that. If he's coming to be baptized, it was going on. It wasn't a first time thing. Right. Plus, with the beauty of us being able to be partakers of this vision given to Dr. Henry Clifford Kinley, we can go a layer deeper and know a baptism took place back here when they went through the Red Sea. And a baptism took place here with with Jonah. So you get a double reinforcement that when he walked the earth plane, he was fulfilling baptism. And our we have a we have a beautiful, we have a beautiful example with uh, 
um, Allison being pregnant. That's the purest baptism that's mm -hmm. ever going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> and it's taking care of and somebody else or another class, I'm not putting that on anybody in this room, <laughs> might show you how the Passover supper already is taken care of by your creator while you're in the womb. Mm -hmm. Because he's infinite. Mm -hmm. Called for something about Hebrews with faith. Okay. Am I all over the place? Yeah, probably. <laughs> but I hope you're being fed. I'll go with Hebrews 11, um, 1, and then I'll drop to 6. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Now, faith is the evidence of things hoped for. Yeah, evidence of things not seen. Say it again, because I think okay. I kind of botched that. Now, faith <laughs> is the substance of things hoped for. Faith is substance. Yeah. Wasn't it Yahweh's substance? Okay. The evidence of things not seen. Faith is the evidence of things not seen. Now that is a hard one. And we recently had a brother on the floor that said, I think it was here, maybe it was on tape. And they, they mentioned <laughs> that this thing is simple yet invisible. Well, that can be kind of difficult. And I recently learned, listened to a tape about our faith. It's a beautiful example of spirit. Because you're never going to see it. You're never going to see your face. Nope. Never. Mm -hmm. But you're not going to see spirit either. It was a beautiful example of spirit. And I'm like, wow. What? <laughs> <laughs> you can see a reflection. I'm never going to see my face. I'm never going to know that scar that's in the middle of my nose from chicken pox, <laughs> blemishes. My grandbaby a couple weeks ago, I got to share this. I'm changing her diaper. <laughs> Let me kiss it. So she kisses it. And I didn't have a boo boo with a blemish or a scar or something. Oh, I think I have a boo boo here too. <laughs> so I got to kiss it. But anyway. <laughs> I don't know. It's I can't help it. Okay. I'm talking about my grandbaby, but. Okay, you're not. Anyway. So if I wanted to know if I had a boo boo, I'm going to look and say, oh no, it's just like. <laughs> Wasn't a real boo boo. But I wouldn't have known I didn't have a boo boo. <laughs> Plus, I went to the mirror to see a reflection because I'm never going to see my face, I'm never going to see spirit. But Yahshua gives a reflection of himself through this earth plane mm -hmm. with water. <laughs> But you're never going to see the vapor. But I don't know if it's cool the room down or heat the room up, but then condensation starts on the window. So I'm not a scientist either. But I do know if I freeze my water, I'll have ice and I can touch it and I can put it in my glass. But they're all H2O. Now I know. That I can touch this and I have a nose and a mouth. <laughs> so there is some concreteness. And that was just something that was shared with me, and I'm sharing it with you. So take it for what it's worth. And another thing back to this Hebrew about faith Yahweh's spirit. <laughs> And if you go to Hebrews, and I think it's in Hebrews where he talks about uh, all the different, have, have you been not believed so and so? Have you, been, I delivered so and so, or and I might be mixing my trains of thought. Yeah, I mean, read, yeah, read some of those first sentences. 17 By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. 
And he that received by the faith, if you go back and read a few, and I get it because if you put Yahweh in there, it even makes sense. You can't have faith <laughs> to see faith. You can't even, you can't possess it unless he give it to you. You you can't work up on getting it unless he puts that spirit within you to recognize it. Read a few of those. By faith, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac, and he that had received the promises of offered up his only begotten son, of whom it is said, then in Isaac shall thy seed be called, accounting that Yahweh so was able to raise and you read up. It. So by Yahweh, and let's go back and read it like that. By Yahweh, Abraham, when he was tried, offered up Isaac. And he then Yahweh's on both ends of the spectrum. He's within, causing you to walk, and he's running the show. By Yahweh, Isaac blessed Jacob and Esau concerning things to come. Uh, by faith, or Yahweh, Joseph, when he died, made mention of the By of Yahweh, Joseph. Joseph. Or by faith, Joseph. By faith, Moses, when he was born. It, by faith, Moses, when he was born. By Yahweh, he's doing it on both ends. He's mm -hmm. on the, I hate to use the word external. He always is and always was. And he outpours that spirit after fulfilling all the works of this old covenant and putting that spirit within you so you can recognize each and every jot and tittle to make a straight line so you can have an understanding of him because spirit's invisible but through the reflection down through the earth plane and oh it's going on now <laughs> aren't the local hospitals telling them <laughs> we're full isn't that where you go for some kind of salvation when things aren't going just right? <laughs> well, <laughs> the Ark of Salvation, maybe it's just a type where we're at in time, but things are getting full. <laughs> I don't know. There's a lot going on. <laughs> One of the things that Yashua also showed me, which will tie in with the beautiful topic of the name that we were going into today, is, and I, I never, ever, ever heard this in uh, 34 years or more been coming here, but it was a tidbit thrown through a video. Back to the name of Jehovah, and I was raised under the Jehovah's Witness faith for a lot of years. Not once wouldn't tell me this part. <laughs> Did you know Hova means destruction? Mm. You can Google that. And I did. Oh my gosh. If it doesn't matter what you're calling, <laughs> sure as heck not going to pick something it means destruction so i'm like okay i gotta just print this out because i thought i'd have it one page for my bag oh no use all my whole ink that i had because it is kept on printing <laughs> does hova really mean ruin or disaster does hova mean ruin disaster in a uh, strong's concordance um and it, it gives a whole kind of goes into a debate. That's what kind of ended up happening with this couple of people. Um, so I was asked, why do you use the name Jehovah when Hova in a strong concordance means ruin and disaster? So if you don't care, or it doesn't matter what you call him, you can check that out. It was this. Just a beautiful witness for me. I'm sure not going to want to be affiliated with a creator that means ruin or disaster. 
I would much rather be affiliated with a creator. I, Asha, I, mm -hmm. I will be what I will to be. And I have trouble absorbing spirit, but when Yashua gives me witnesses that can help me understand spirit, mm -hmm. like vapor in a, in a room, mm -hmm. or the fact that I can't see my face, it also helps me understand why he could be referred to as the lamb slain from the foundations mm -hmm. of the earth. Because that's been a hard one for me. But he gave me a beautiful witness. There was a lamb slain in Egypt before Moses would be called up to see in a vision the foundation of the earth. So if I'm not. use neat enough to understand how this could be the lamb slain before the foundations of the earth it's okay because i'll give you a witness daughter because i am the father of philo progenitiveness why do you think you possess it and you go, oh, hell, come hell or high water. There ain't nothing you aren't doing for your kid. Mm -hmm. So relax. <laughs> Whatever's going on, it's okay. Mm -hmm. And not that we all don't have those times that we're shaking. But... Mm -hmm. There's still chairs mm -hmm. in the hospital. Mm -hmm. The vision that Doc was given, the nurse practitioners are still requiring to be I actually think that might be some of the morsels. Cracker with cheese. Beat that. That Yashua allowed me to share with you. And I do thank Yashua each and every day. Lay my head on that pillow for keeping me, for giving me some care. And even the times that maybe I didn't put the effort forth, you took me to it. Just like the name, I wasn't ever one of those people that went back to a priest and asked the name of my creator, Yahweh. But in my life's journey, he's putting me in situations where my father drove around with the tetragrammaton on a metal plate on the back of his car because he thought that's what he should be doing i guess for being a jehovah's witness and definitely i had some affiliation with jehovah and now 30 some years later the first time i ever get to know it meant ruin or destruction that's some kind of love that's some kind of love same kind of love that lets us walk around in this whole creation and be able to see checkmate <laughs> everything's even either living or non-living everything's threefold whether it be from this from a cell with its three parts mm -hmm. proton neutron or electron or with everything with an atom. That's an atom, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's a cell. Yep. Yeah. See what I mean? It's time to take a chair. <laughs> but praise <laughs> Yah for all of the witnesses we are all given every day. And 
Thank you again. The next speaker we call upon Justin Snyder. Class, I'm happy to be here. Um, give me some testimony from the Edward and Sex Comes Down in the school. Um, I enjoyed myself today. And um, hey, I'll, I'll pick up anything that's available to eat and we'll eat. <laughs> I'll sit down and eat a whole jar of olives or, you know, if you spread a, a schmore report in front of me, I'm good to that too. So I like it all. And when it comes to Yashua, um, I hope eat for eternity. Yeah. <laughs> um, let's go to Ezekiel 36. Um, pick it up there on 17. It's, uh, it's always encouraging to see how the spirit works. And, um, you know, recently I've had the opportunity to talk to people. And of course, the name comes up. And one of them went to a, you know, someone that they would look up to a minister. And uh, they came back with a letter basically saying that, you know, it doesn't matter what you call them. <laughs> and uh, I didn't tell them, you know, she didn't know anything about it. And it, last week was the same way. Things just, the spirit just knows how to, right. you know how to fix our infirmities, how to address our issues. Um, yeah. And that, it really does show that that Holy Spirit, um, when he said that he would send the, the Father would send the Comforter in his name, mm -hmm. um, you know, you know, from your own experiences that that comfort isn't something fuzzy and warm, you know, <laughs> we have examples of that, but it's, it's within. You know, and he's working through each and every one of his sons down here as for the edifying of the body. You know, like the, the scripture, you know, I hope we get there a little bit. It's not a big boastful thing. He, he gives gifts to certain people that this, it seems like they got it all together, but they're nothing without the rest of the body. It, it, it all works together. You see? Okay, let's go back here. Ezekiel 36, start 16. Uh, sure. Moreover, the word of Yahweh came unto me, saying. Okay, so at least you know where Ezekiel's getting it, you know, because that's another thing. We down here, we're going to, to go with what thus saith Yahweh. Right. You see, that <clears throat> set this thing up. He revealed himself, you see, to Moses and the prophets through a divine vision, you see. He illustrated or showed himself as a anthropomorphic or a um a super incorporeal being something that they could understand you see he appeared to them in the shape and the form of a man now you can get a verse that yahweh is not a man he's not a man but he appeared in the shape of a man in a spirit man as it were because that's what man is most he, that's what we're acquainted with when when you communicate with each other you know you don't expect to get uh, I shouldn't say this because the people do get a lot out of their dogs. So I don't want to use the dog as an example. <laughs> I use my cow as an example. I don't expect to go up to the cows and have some great conversation with them, you see, as far as getting inf information about anything. So I'm just using that as an example. That's how he that's how he showed himself. Okay. All right, we son of man, when the house of Israel dwelt in their own land, they defiled it. By their own way and by their doing. You know, he's talking about how that when he had already delivered them, you see, they had been tearing in the wilderness for some 40 years and he had given them their own land, you see. Okay, read. Their way was before me as the uncleanness of a removed woman. Their way was before me. What's he say what it was like? Uh, as the uncleanness of a removed woman. Okay. The uncleanness of a removed woman. Wherefore I poured my fury That's what he's comparing it to. Dirty. Dirty. You see? Their ways. You see? You didn't listen to the, his way. Yeah. He's talking about that they went a whoring, basically. 
and they after their ways, their thoughts. Read. Wherefore I poured my fury upon them for the blood that they had shed upon the land and for their idols wherewith they had polluted it. And I, you can't find anywhere where he's big on idol worship or giving worship to any other thing except for him. He, I am Yahweh. There is none else. You see? Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed because I'm the only one. I'm the only true Elohim. You see? Okay, read. And I scattered them among the heathen, and they were dispersed through see, the country. It, it wasn't without consequence. Their disobedience up here. You see, it wasn't without consequence that they went forward after idols and they went after their own thoughts. Okay, read. He, he, he scattered them. Away. He scattered them. And according okay. to their now, doings, I judged them. Along with that scattering, you see, this is a line that you, you will see. There was a time way, way back, and I think we have one little illustration over here. Uh, Power Battle. Power Battle. You see, there was a time that the world was was of one language. Okay. You see, Hebrew. Not can told us it was Hebrew, and it made things a lot easier. If, if you think about even modern day things, the global economy and all that stuff coming to light has become easier because English is accepted more or less as I will say it's a universal language, but it's pretty close. You know, you always think when you go to a foreign country, oh no, what am I going to do? I'm not going to be able to. Communicating. Lo and behold, they speak English. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty darn good, most of them, too. You go over to Africa, they speak very English. You see? And that's a reflection of the end declared from the beginning. That's Yahweh at work. You see? Because you had the beginning, there was one universal language. And so he's bringing that full circle in type. Right. English is becoming a type of a universal language. Okay? Now, at that time of the Tower of Babel, you know, they were things were, were going well. But what happened? They were disobedient to the. He, he had given. Noah and his family see a promise that he would no longer destroy the earth with water. You see, through the generations, mankind forgets Yahweh. You see, it doesn't keep it in memory. And comes vain in their own philosophies and says, well, well, we'll, we'll build a tower and we'll be safe. You see, it wasn't pleasing to Yahweh. And at that time, he confused language and there was a scattering. You see, it's a, it's a repeat. Okay, go ahead. And when they entered unto the heathen, whither they went, they profaned my holy name when they said to them. Whoa, these, it wasn't just the idol worshiping. Right? See, it wasn't them just being carried off, carried off with their, their little whoredoms and in the groves. And there's a lot that you can read in there that they were doing as far as the things that their nastiness. Okay. But here's something that it's going to boil down to. That's a consistent thing that going away from Yahweh brings on to you. We'll start, start that up again. And when they entered unto the heathen, whither they went, they profaned my holy name when the when they said to them, These are the people of Yahweh and are gone forth out of his land. But I had pity for mine holy name, mm -hmm. which the house of Israel had profaned among the heathen, yes. whither they went. See, after all that he had done for them, after delivering them out of this, the, the land of Egypt, you see. By the power of that name, mind you, she had read over there in Exodus um, how that for this very deed, if I raise thee up, he's talking to Pharaoh, you see, that my name might be declared throughout the whole earth, you see, they okay, read. Therefore, say unto the house of Israel, thus saith Yahweh Elohim, I do not this for your sakes, O house of Israel, but for my holy name's sake, oh. which you have profaned. When among the heathen, whether you went, he did it for his very namesake. You That's see, right. oh, but the name is important. <laughs> he, did, he delivers them out of the greatest nation at that time by the, his name for the purpose of his name being declared throughout the whole earth. He said he lets them be entrapped in the way of the heathen, draws them back out of there for what reason? So that they can be a great nation again, so that they can have a, a physical Jerusalem, so they can. No. 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 For my name's sake. How could you ever come up with the conclusion the name is important? <laughs> you couldn't. Even, even Manny, that's that dumb. <laughs> you need some help to be that stupid. He is anointed 
cherubim that cover it. And one of the main things that he likes to cover it is the name. You see? And you'll find it. Let's get is that Revelation 3, 14. Revelation 3 and 14. Okay. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans, right? These things say it. Yah, ayah. That's not the right. faithful no. and true witness. That's no. not what we're I'm looking for. The, the, the he that blasphemes the, the name, the tabernacle, oh. down the throne of heaven. <clears throat> Maybe it's 13. Thirteen six. Okay. And he opened his mouth and blasted me against Yahweh to blaspheme his name. Okay. And we'll read up a little bit. Let's get a little context. Sorry. All right. And they worshipped the dragon for, and they worshipped the dragon, which gave power unto the beast, and they worshipped the beast, saying, "Who is like unto the beast? Who is able to make war with him?" And there was given unto him a mouth, speaking great things and blasphemies. And the power was given unto him to continue forty and two months. And he opened his mouth and blasphemy against Yahweh to blaspheme his name. Okay, he's blaspheming his, his name. His tabernacle. And to them that dwell in heaven. And to them that dwell in heaven. You see, you're not going to be well received going out there and, and teaching the true name. Why? Because the devil's got pretty good stronghold in this world religiously you know scientifically if you want to go that that route you see the political spectrum all that different stuff you see he's he that's where his strongholds are you see but what did it say about the through this preaching of the gospel we're, we're into ripping down those strongholds right you see yahweh is able to rip down those strongholds you see yeah. through the foolishness of preaching it's it's just a beautiful thing how powerful this gospel is you see and don't don't make light of yahweh's power you see right. it, this thing is for real <laughs> it's as real as real yes yeah. you see and you know it, it's amazing that there's what some 36 chapters just there in exodus i think about written about the um oh i missed nexus in the law written about the tabernacle and the priesthood and, and all that stuff and it's just not something you hear anybody talk about. You see, they got the tabernacle choir. They got the, you know, little boxes and the different things that, that go on, you know, as far as their ceremonies go. But as far as Yahweh showing that he's a pattern and having that built down here as a representation, you see, of him being the archetype or original pattern of the universe. Or, you ever heard that in any other place? <laughs> And they were, you know, we, we've been to that Holy Land experience and stuff, and they have a recreation, and they're aware of it. Yeah. But you don't walk in the door down there at the Holy Land experience and, and say, come in and look at Yahweh Alvin manifesting himself with Israel. Now that would be something, <laughs> you know. Um, they don't have, they don't actually know what it's about. They don't have knowledge of what's, what Yahweh is doing with that, you see. And that's something that, that the, Mr. Nickley is continuously blaspheming. Right, you see his tabernacle. Why? Because it's a witness. It's real. It's showing you the you and the you the spirit. There's three compartments, but it's one tabernacle. Why? Because it's Yahweh Elohim and Yahshua means three or one. You see, it's so. It's just so simple. And of course, them that dwell in heaven, he, did, you know what I mean. He, he, he's going to be against the those that are for Yahshua. And and Yahshua even said, you know, <coughs> to be prepared for that. See, he was only talking inside the meeting, he prepared for that. Okay, go back to Ezekiel. Ezekiel 36 and 23. Mm -hmm. And I will sanctify my great name, mm -hmm. which was profaned among see, the heathen. See the difference? He's going to sanctify his name. You see, you have a, a, that's set apart. You see? To sanctify is, is basically the opposite of vanity. You see? That yeah. he, so he gives the commandment, don't take my name in vain to make it to not. He's gonna it's gonna be sanctified. Okay, read. Which was profaned among the heathen, yep. which you have profaned in the midst of them. And the heathen shall know that I am Yahweh, saith Yahweh Elohim, 
when I shall be sanctified in you before their eyes. For I will take you from among them. Okay, so now it's going to be sanctified in them. Then he's going to say, therefore, I will take you from among the heathen. Now, just look at this. It's a little, this little snapshot because you know that this is examples or examples for our admonition is what Paul talks yeah. about it, you see? And so you can look at the things that are going on with Israel as a typical people, and you can see that the, the things that they did physically so, we were entrapped just as bad spiritually so. You see, they had nations over here that, that, that needed to be overcome in the, their promised land. Well, we came in with all kinds of different condemnations, you see, degradations, you see. Uh, any, any kind of nation that you want to put on it. See, we came in with those things. Mm -hmm. But see, Yahweh, he took them from among the heathen. You see, he fought their battles for them when, the, when they went over there. You see, he was the one that was doing the work. And we, we quite often go over there to Joshua 24 chapter. It was really Yahshua mm -hmm. that right. was doing it for yeah. them. Just like it down here, it's really mm -hmm. Yahshua. He's the one that's doing the, the work. You see? Okay, keep reading. For I will take you from among the heathen and gather you out of all countries and will bring you into your own land. See, and there, it was not going to be, you know, because they were scattered amongst all the nations at that point. When you read about the, you know, the time of Yahshua, they were coming in from different, different areas. Okay, read. Then will I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your now, filthiness. He's talking about a clean water, you see. And I'm sure back in the time of Joshua, there was cleaner physical water, but that's not the clean water that he's talking about, right? You see, and you and this was mentioned here about this water here that this uh, um, this fluid here that the baby is in capsule, that amniotic fluid. That's a clear, clean fluid, you see. And you have a um, an example too in your with your brain being encapsulated in that cerebral, cerebral spinal right. fluid. That is a pure water. You see, and that's a, a type or a, a, an example in your body of this clean water being sprinkled upon you. You see, because up there you have a, a, a it's like a fountain coming right out. Mm -hmm. You see, and you it's really shows you that it, it shows you that there's a, a clear water on you. That's right. It, both sides, yeah. you see, and and the, it be that being encapsulated, um, your brain being encapsulated, it protects you from deadly blows, and it also keeps the thing cool because that you know, like uh, computers make a lot of heat, you know, just like your master computer makes a lot of heat, so that's a cooling system for your head. Mm -hmm. Ryan used to say that you know, just like that, you come down here and hear this this clean water being freeze. And you're a hot head, it might cool you down. Yeah. You see? And it's true. Sometimes that, that's the only thing that we'll get it, you know. Because I think we all, a hot head really can be boiled down to us. We thought pretty highly of our own thoughts. Yeah. You see? But when you are obedient and you, you just submit, I'll say, to Yahweh's way, you realize your thoughts weren't that good. You see? They're, they're nothing compared to his thoughts. Because they're way. His higher, his thoughts are just as the heavens are higher than the earth. So are my thoughts and other thoughts. Yeah. Like Yahweh. See, I didn't come up with it. <laughs> his thoughts are way higher than our thoughts. You see, and it's it, it's not hard to you know. I mean, just look at the things that people really delve into out there. It's it's low. It's fleshly stuff. You know what I mean? That's what that's what the guy did do. Okay. Keep it. Then I sprinkle clean water upon you, and you shall be clean from all your filthiness and from all your idols. Will I cleanse you? Okay, so he, this water is going to clean you from all your filthiness and all your idols, all those things that they, all those thoughts. Remember they talked about in the beginning how oh, that it was it was of their thoughts to go up here and to do these things. You see. It's the same down here, spiritually. So you need to be clean of all those thoughts, theories, concepts, yeah. opinions that you came in here with. You see? And it's not by magic. This clean water is the preaching of the true and genuine gospel of Yahshua the Messiah. That's what has that power. See, that's the clean water that can be sprinkled upon you. 
All right, read. A new heart also <laughs> will I give you. Okay, now he's also talking about that he's going to give you a new heart. You see? He's going to give you a new heart so that this law can be put in, in your heart. See, you need a new heart because that, that old that old carnal way wasn't pleasing unto Yahweh. You see, in fact, it talks about that um, a carnal mind is enmity against That's Yahweh. Right. And a new spirit will I put within you. You and see, that, that's that, this new law, that law of the spirit of life. That's that new spirit. That's the Holy Spirit in you. This isn't some, <laughs> this isn't something that can't be understood. You see, there was an Old Testament, you see, that was given to Israel. We usually will go over to, um, Jeremiah 31, 31, you see, it shows that it, there, when he took them out of here, when he delivered them out of Egypt, you see, Moses <clears throat> went up here some three principal trips, and he was given a law, you see, and we have, we've been working with this a little bit in workshop. Israel, you see, when they these things were spoken down to them, they said, all that Yahweh said, now they, they got it from Yahweh, they knew where it came from. All that Yahweh said, we will do and be obedient. Lie. <laughs> Didn't have the heart to keep it. See, that's that. What that's where that change. You can see that there was a change that was necessary. They needed a new heart. You see, not a stony heart. See, just like there, this was represented here. He comes down with this stony heart. You see. And he sees that Israel has corrupted themselves, and he waxed Moses waxed hot, and he cast that stone down, showing it's a it's a type. You see how the Israel wouldn't be able to keep that first law. You see, and, and it also shows that they broke Yahweh's heart. They, there was a marriage here, and they they went a whoring right off the bat. See, idol worship, giving credit where credit is not due. You see, okay, read. And a new spirit will I put within you, and I will take away the stony heart of the flesh, and I will give you a heart of flesh, and I will put my spirit. But he's saying, saying you know that that sometimes can be confusing, but he's saying that he, he's going to give you a, a soft heart. You see, that's going to be accepting of things, Yahweh. That's able to receive this gospel. You see, and you can see that that that's still going on. If a person has a stony heart. You could preach so you're blue in the face, and there's nothing wrong with that, by the way. <laughs> it ain't hurting anything. You know what I mean? You say, well, I'm just not going to throw pearls at the swine. There is, there is a verse on that, too. But it ain't, it ain't hurting you to go preach the gospel. Okay, read. Yep. I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes. Now, he's going to cause you to walk in my statutes, you see? This is going to be a big life choice that you're you're going to have. You see, that's not that's not what he's saying there. He will cause you, and he's going to do it in his own way. And it might not be the way that you observe with someone else. That's not really what he's what. It, that's not what the common salvation is. You know, people they say, "Well, we're all going to look to say it's going to be we're going to be like you know drones out here or something." But you can proceed it that way. Common salvation is you're going to receive it. What's common about it is the way that we receive it by the preaching of the gospel. You see, you get it the self same way. And cause you to walk in my statutes, and you shall keep my judgments and do that. Mm -hmm. And you shall dwell in the land that I gave to your fathers, and you shall be my people, and I will be your element. Mm -hmm. Why don't we go over there to Jeremiah 31? Right. So I wasn't going to work with the covenants, but I guess we'll, we'll work a little bit with this because this this is a beautiful witness you see of of, of you really being under the old covenant right. right here while you're in the womb. This shows a totally different life. You see with this baby yep. in here, you don't well you're not even breathing, but you don't receive your food the same way. You see your nutrients the same way. You're not you're not breathing the same way. I'll say that because you're still getting oxygen. Yeah. Right. You see, but the the lungs aren't working here in the womb the way they do when you come out, and you're getting everything from your your mother. 
And you have this, there's a few different um, terms in here with the amniotic fluid. I think amnion means little lamb. Yeah. You see, you're rafted like in that little lamb, just like back here with this Passover, they were covered by that little lamb. You see, it had to be a lamb of the first year. Yeah. You see, a little lamb back there covered by that. You see, and then they were, uh, the baby is eating from this placenta. That's where it's getting its nutrients from, from the mother. You see, and that means flat cake. Well, what's on the, the menu back here? Unleavened bread. Yeah. You see, and unleavened bread back here. So, uh, Jeremiah 31 31. Behold, the days come, saith Yahweh, that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Okay, so he says, Behold, the days come. See, those are the days of the, the life, ministry, um, death, burial, and resurrection. Yeah, that's right. Those are the days that he's talking about. Yep. Okay, behold, the days come. See, this is futuristic because this is the prophet prophesying at this time. You see? Okay, three. Now, according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them by the Now, this is, you, you can't. <laughs> You can't mess these things up too bad. You just stick with what Yahweh says. That's right. That's right. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day that I took them out of the land of Egypt. You see, I brought them out of there by their hand. I'm sorry. I chopped that one a little bit. Right. Go with them by their hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, mm -hmm. which my covenant they break, although I wasn't husband unto them, saith Yahweh. It was a good husband unto them, you see, but they, they broke that. Okay, but this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. So it's not going to be according to this, and it, you can't really. You, 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 he makes it clear on the covenant that was made back here. This was the the Mosaic covenant, as we would refer to it as, and it contained in there was these carnal ordinances. That's right. You see, physical ways of worship, and we have these examples here, but there was. We find out that there was what some 613 different statutes, ordinances, and judgments that they were to keep under that old law. You see, and we have some typical ones here of circumcision, baptisms, sacrifices, ceremonies, Passovers, Ten Commandments. Now, this because this is this was set up with Israel doesn't mean that there wasn't wasn't principles of baptism going on before, and that's, that's illustrated right. right here. You see. Because what sometimes what you need to see is, is that the, the divine ordering of affairs here that Yahweh has set up, these ages and dispensations, you see, you need to know where, where you're at in these yeah. ages and dispensations. And know where, where, where when you're getting something out of, out of the Bible, who's being talked to and when they're being talked to. You see, because the things that we're going on here in the second uh, dispensation with Noah aren't the same things that are going on over here with the Mosaic law. You see, they weren't expected to make an art, you see, to pass over from like yeah. that. But that's what happened back here with Noah. <clears throat> but Yahweh, because he's 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 a <clears throat> he's spirit, and what you're gonna see is there's a um a body of he really, this uh, doctrine is a body of principles. So those principles are going to overturn and overturn and overturn. And because he doesn't change, I am Yahweh, I change not. You're going to see those things overturn and overturn and overturn. But according to his purpose, there's going to be a time for, you know, there's a time for everything. He, he does have a time to his, the, this purpose. Okay, so anyways, long-winded thing to say, but... You, you had baptisms going on. You had the earth inundated in water right from the beginning. That's described in Genesis. The earth was inundated in water, and the water rolled back to the dry land here. You see, that was the earth being baptized That's right. or immersed. That's an immersion back there, just like with the, <clears throat> just like with the um, ark, you see, Noah's ark here. This ark was immersed or inundated in water, you see. And what you want to see is, is that the, the principle, was there not a cleansing going on here? Was there were not a renewing going on here? The, the earth was, it was washed of its wickedness for a, yeah. a time, <laughs> you see? And it was, uh, it, they didn't, they didn't come out of there with the same attitude that they went in with, you see? There was a change that took place. 
<clears throat> just like there, there was, um, you know, he, this, there was a shaping of the earth. There was a change that took place. There was a change that took place. You see, they went through here. They were cleansed. You see, of the, those that <clears throat> Pharaoh and his holes. It says that Pharaoh sank as a stone. It, and his horsemen and his chariots and all that, they were washed away in this Red Sea. There was a, a washing. There was a baptism there. And that's, Paul refers back to that, to, to not be ignorant, that that was a baptism. And that was before they received the law of baptism, as far as the ordinance was concerned. Okay? Okay. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel mm -hmm. after those days, saith Yahweh. Now, this is going to be the covenant that he's going to make with the house of Israel after those days, saith Yahweh. I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts and will be their element, and they shall be my people. Now, he's going to put his law in their inward parts, you see. And he sh they shall be my people, and I will be their element, you see. And he'll go on to say that that they're going to know me. Now, how could you ever say that someone is going to write an actual law in your heart and you're not going to know his name? I mean, that's right. That, it's so, and in and, and a marriage. Oh, well, I got married to this guy the other day. Oh, really? Who? I don't know. Brown hair, blue eyes, real nice. <laughs> I mean, seriously, can you imagine someone getting, I mean, it probably has happened. <laughs> so I'm sure it happens in Vegas. You know? yeah. <laughs> got married to, I don't know. You know? But it, it's probably not going to be a marriage that lasts. You know? Probably not going to be much substance there. But you see here, <laughs> that there's some serious substance with Yahweh. And it is just, it's beyond, um, it's beyond ignorance to think that he, he doesn't care about his name after seeing the, the witnesses and seeing that he, he has a whole covenant, you see, with with a people, and that there's a type of a marriage and all the things go on with it, you see. All right, so so back here, these things are going on, and then the the, the baby, you see, it's for 40, 40 weeks out here, you see, and by no surprise, because we got a pattern operation, yeah. and you see. So with, without shape and form, you see in this these fluids, because the 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 material might be back here, but you don't see that what the baby's going to look like, even though it might be written back here that that the baby's got blue eyes. You don't see it come into shape and form until it comes down into the womb, and you start to see that development. Just like we know all the the substance of Yahweh is back here. But it's indiscernible. It's incon you you can't conceive of Yahweh pure spirit, but he does come down so that you can now you have an understanding of his love when he comes down and he 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 sheds his glory, which is like an under his blood. You see, that's why he's the lamb slain from the foundation of the earth. And you wouldn't, that's not concrete in your faith until you see the lamb down here. Until you see the lamb offered here, until you see those daily sacrifices, that lamb being there, yeah. until you hear that he's pointed out as the lamb of Yahweh, you see? And now the true lamb, he comes in, he died, he's buried, you see, and he resurrected. Now we've got an appreciation for what he did. Right. But this was a great coming down. Yeah. This was a, he divested himself of uh, his glory, as it were, in this pristine state. Mm -hmm. okay, you really Dr. Kinley called it an ontological state of perfection. He come out of perfection. All right. That's that the death. You yeah. see? Okay. All right. So just like here, the one, one sperm comes in and makes union with that egg, you see. But there's a great, there's a there's a there's a death there. There's some 60 million sperm cells in a healthy male ejaculation, and all the other ones die. You know, you see, but one is 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 um union there with the egg, just like here. Moses was the only one that came up here and was in, was impregnated, as it were, with this knowledge of Yahweh, this true knowledge of Yahweh. Because see, they saw something. Yeah. They came out and they saw something. 
but they obviously had no understanding, you see, no revelation of what they saw. But Moses, you see, he is getting the, the, the full scope of Yahweh's purpose here laid out for him, see? And then, then let's have a baby, you see? So nine months later, the tabernacles is, is reared up, you see? Because of this knowledge that was implanted, just like here, this this one sperm is united here. Let's make a baby. Nine months later, that forty weeks, see, and he takes on shape and form in the womb. Wasn't always in shape and form here. There's just so many great witnesses for the these these bodies of principle here. See, are consistent all the way down through. Okay, so now this baby when he comes out, he's that, that, that connection with the mother is, is severed. You see, he's not eating the same. Just okay. like, you yeah. see, when these things are fulfilled <laughs> back here, just like when these things are fulfilled, you know, they had dietary laws. Yeah. You don't have to do that anymore. And it shows when, when, when Paul says, well, I've never eaten anything unclean. You see, because he says, go, kill, and eat. You see, he's getting a vision. Oh, it's Peter, sorry. Peter's given a vision of that because he was a, he was a Jew. He never had any. He never had bacon. They don't eat swine. You see, for dietary law. That was under this. Yeah. But guess what? Now that that law is taken out of the way, it doesn't matter what you eat physically so. But you should look at that. There, it, there was a dietary law there showing that it does matter what you take in spiritually so. That's what's being, that's what's being converted over. Just like there's a... <clears throat> Just like this, it's not like you throw out this body. We're not like, uh, you know, insects and stuff. They actually shed like their exoskeleton and all that stuff. It's like almost like a, a new body. And there's there's good witnesses for that too. But but what I'm saying is that it, it's the same body that comes out of here. It's just now he's not eating the same. You see, it's the same soul that comes out of there. It's just not eating the same. That, that that connection has been severed, and now he's able to, well, in, in this example, he's going to take a mother's milk. He's going to be brought up, and there's a, um, a growing through that um, preaching of the law and the testimony. You see the preaching of Yahshua through the law and the prophets. That's his witnesses. You see? Those are, those are those witnesses. Just like the mother has two witnesses, and that's how you're brought up on that on that milk, just like we're brought up on that sure milk, you see? But there is a time where now that milk is, it's not appropriate anymore. You know? and, and some women like to press this envelope, you know, you see these, these people nursing their kids till they're like 12 years old or something. <laughs> <laughs> I bet they get pretty big, but I don't know, they might be twisted. Uh, <laughs> anyways, so it shows you though that there's a time where that you just like the Jews, they're not even accepting that Yahshua has come in. You see, they've never, they're not being weaned off of that physical way of worship. You see, they've they're they're it's a it's a, a stumbling block, you see. Mm -hmm. Just like okay, so now, but now you see that Yahshua has fulfilled those things, taken that physical way of worship out of the way. It's not like you're you're giving up your foundation of that milk. You still go back to the law and the prophets. And that's not the, the point, but the point of it is, is that now we have a sure, more sure word of prophecy. So Paul um, talked about it. And we'll pick that up. I don't know where that is. Second Peter 1 we yes, the second Peter 1 19. Mm -hmm. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, mm -hmm. whereunto you do well that you take heed as unto a light that shineth in a dark place mm -hmm. until the day dawn and the day star arise in your heart. See, that's what we're looking for. You see, that's that's showing you that 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 law that's written in the hearts and minds of mankind, you see. That day star rising in your heart. See, that's that's Yahshua in you. Mm -hmm. Okay, three. Knowing this first, 
that no prophecy of the scripture is of any private interpretation. See, but you should keep this in mind, knowing this first, that the prophecy, you see, this prophecy of the scripture, or this teaching, this understanding, it didn't come by any private interpretation. This wasn't our big fat idea to organize these biblical events in a threefold manner according to a divine tabernacle. We're just not a test butter, <laughs> you see? And it's, it's incredibly simple, but there's scholars of play reading that book and having zero understanding, zero understanding that, that, that Adam died a death, you see, and, and he lived 930 years and he died is what the book says. You see, that's a death. And he was buried in that, that work, you see, but they were told that through childbearing, there would be a resurrection. This one Yahshua would come through. So you have a degeneration with Adam and you have a regeneration with Yahshua. That's a death, burial, and a resurrection. And you see that that same thing is going gonna, is gonna to repeat that there was, there's a death here. You see, the, the flood was, when he says the end of all flesh was come before me, that's what Yahweh tells Noah. That's a death. You see, they, they enter into the ark and they're buried in there and the ark resurrects on the water. That's a death, burial, and resurrection with Noah. You see, why? It's testifying to Yahshua that he is going to go through a death, burial, and resurrection according to the scriptures. You see? And that is some good news. Okay, keep, keep going there. But it, it wasn't, it's not our idea. You know what I mean? That's just not how you read the book. You got in there and said, well, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth, and the earth was without form and void. And you had this imagination of, you know, of what that what it's all about. And and you you jump well, that, that's no good. I guess I'm a New Testament preacher. And you you go over to Matthew and start reading. You see, and you you just wouldn't have any understanding without seeing how that this thing goes by a pattern. That there's a pattern in operation. You see. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of man, but holy men of Yahweh spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. Okay, so this never came in by the will of man. See, that, that confirms what we're talking about over there in um, Ezekiel. And the prophecy came not by the will of man, you see, but holy men of Yahweh, you see, they were set apart, they were sanctified, that's all. They were taken out and they were say used but they were they were uh <laughs> I'm just gonna say used they were used in the purpose of Yahweh down through there you see they were moved by the Holy Spirit that's why that that this is amazing that this this Bible has survived the way it, it has and if you read the history of the guys that were translating the Bible and the, the original scriptures and all this stuff that their life was in danger a lot of the time. You see, it was not well through the whole time. Why? Because the Mr. Nick likes to cover these things up. But it this is the best we got. <laughs> and when you get in there and when you recognize that it's thus saith Yahweh that, that he came to the, the prophets, you see, through vision and revelation. He he came to Moses and gave him the information and told him what to write down in the book. And that's how we got our Bible down there, that puts a whole new meaning on it. It's not just some script that was handed down generationally, uh, you know what I mean? Because we got that kind of stuff, you know? Yeah. And sure, that's that's up for debate. But guess what? What thus saith Yahweh is not up for debate. It's, it, you can present it and you got to let the chips fall where they may. See? You hew to the line. That That's, that, that's the only duty we really have is to stick with what thus saith Yahweh. It, if you don't, you're you're likely to go the way of the heathen. You see, to be dragged off on some imagination. Okay. All right, we got you finished there. Yeah. Let's go over to the scripture reading, please. You can start at Second Corinthians ten. You can start at six. Six. <laughs> and having it in a readiness to revenge. All disobedience, when your obedience is fulfilled, mm -hmm. do you look on these things after the outward appearance? See, and listen, the world out there is so distracting. 
And that's what we're, we, we all are so guilty, this flesh of looking on the outward appearance. And that's what the Mr. Iniquity wants you to do. Because it's just going to be easy for him to cause his little divisions and all yeah. that stuff. You see? But don't drag it down here. It doesn't, flesh doesn't belong up here. It really doesn't. You see? And if, it, if it's going to be for the dividing of brethren, what good is it going to do? You see? We want, to, we want to be in unity. We want to look at the things that are unifying us down here. Okay? I don't know if it's about to get too preachy, but it's evident that there's a lot of pressure on the sons at this point. Yeah. You see? The mystery of Nick Lee is working harder than ever because he knows that he had to go a short time. See? So it's, it behooves us to stick to the way that this thing was delivered. You mm -hmm. see? Dr. Kinley, in his last lectures, you, you check them out. Mm -hmm. He was teaching blood, water, spirit, 40, death, burial, That's resurrection, right. the gospel in its simplicity. Yep. And he encouraged us, seal it with a kiss. Keep it simple, students. He didn't call us stupid. <laughs> <laughs> Although many of us came in. Way below average intelligence, which is what <laughs> you know, student yeah. means. Um, but guess what? We were all given a sufficient amount of intelligence to comprehend the purpose of the yeah, right. He said, if you could count to three, you could know something about the hour. You see? That, that's, a, that's a pretty nice, even playing field. Yeah. See? Okay, Lee. Do you look on things after the outward appearance? If any man trusts to himself that he is the Messiah, let him of himself think this again. That as he is the Messiah, even so are we the Messiah. Mm -hmm. right. For though I should boast somewhat more of our authority, which Yahweh hath given us for edification. See, and, and he has given us gifts, you see? Yeah. And you want to make, you know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> it might come across as boastful or something at some point because he's, he's filled you up with some good stuff. Mm -hmm. You see? And it is for, well, keep reading. <laughs> have given us gratification and not for your destruction. Mm -hmm. I should not be ashamed that right. I may not seem as if I would terrify you by letters. For his letters say they are weighty and powerful, but his bodily <coughs> presence is weak and his speech contemptible. Let such as see, there, it's just, it might not be the greatest vessel that it's being delivered through, you see. It, you know, there's a brethren that will quite often would say, you know, it comes with a physical fight. I'm a punk, you know. I wouldn't be any good, but if you want to battle in this gospel, let's go, <laughs> you know. And that's what that, the weapons of our warfare are not carnal. You see, we don't have a, a war out here. There's plenty of that physical war stuff going on, you see. But when it comes to the preaching of the gospel, you let Yahshua fight your battles, right? you see. He, he already won the war. <laughs> you, you just gotta, you know, you just, yeah, you just gotta stand back and watch how move. Let such and one think this that such as we are in word by letters, when we are absent, such will we be also indeed when we are present. Mm -hmm. For right. we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves. But they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. But we will not boast of things without our measure, but according to the measure of the rule which I have distributed to us, a measure to reach even unto you. For we stretch not ourselves beyond our measure, as though we reach not unto you, for we are for we are come as far as to you also in preaching the gospel of the Messiah, mm -hmm. not boasting of things without without our measure, that is, of other men's labors, but having hope when your faith is increased, that we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly. Okay, read that again, George. <laughs> not boasting of things without our measure, that is, of other men's and labors. I know this is a, it's a lot to take in, just the way that it's being worded here and stuff but you know i'll simplify it as this is that don't preach something you don't know don't yeah. you know what i mean you, yeah. you don't want to get 
too high in your own mind where you're, you know, going off on something that you don't truly know and understand. Don't boast beyond your measure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that's it. Yeah. But having hope when you're facing you see, the we, trees. Well, you we do have some serious hope down yeah. here. Mm -hmm. And the faith has been increased. The, the knowledge and understanding of Yahweh that's been poured out here in these end days, thank you, is just, it's incredible. And the, the access to all these different classes mm -hmm. and the that SoundCloud, as far as, uh, you know, I had a, I always have these, these little thoughts, these prayers that go through my, why can't I just sit down at one of Dr. King's classes? Like, could you just take me back there in my mind? <laughs> I really just like wanted to go to one of his classes and it just kept repeating in my mind. And lo and behold, these sound clouds comes out because yeah. you know the old record a lot of the old recordings were rough. Yeah. And then these things come out, it's like you're sitting right there. Yeah. It's like you're sitting right in one of those classes. Yeah. You know, it wasn't my way because I got this imagination, like I'm gonna go back to 1965 or something and be, you know, sitting there in one of his lectures. But <laughs> It, he made the, his classes available. That's right. You see, it's just a beautiful thing. Yeah. Okay, read. That we shall be enlarged by you according to our rule abundantly mm -hmm. to preach the gospel in the regions beyond you and not to boast see, in another man's line. This is what you're going to be enlarged. This is why this is what the knowledge is for. So that you can go preach the gospel. You see, it's not to puff a man off. See, three, and not to boast in another man's line of things made ready to our hand, but he that glorieth, let him glory in Yahweh. That's right. For not how, he. How are you how are you going to have any more glory than the glory that Yahweh has offered? Anyways, you see, you see all the glory that is out there. You know, it's temporal. It's physical. You see, I mean, some of these guys. <laughs> They got houses, and, and there's, you know, there was a song I always enjoyed, you know, that, um, you know, that he had a mansion. They tell me it's nice. I've never been there, you know. Yeah. And I think about that. That's that, and it was that was supposed to be a joke. It was his own. Yeah, it was his own mansion. He'd never been there, you know. <laughs> and um, it's a good, it's a good song. It was funny, but it was he was mocking some of these guys, and it's true, like. You know, some of these people got 12 damn mansions all over the country and they never even go there. They just have someone watching for them. Talk about vanity. I mean, it doesn't, that's that defines the word right there. It's like you got this beautiful mansion and they never go there. Yeah. It's just, anyways, read. Or not he that commendeth himself is approved, but whom Yahweh commended. You see, who Yahweh commended. See, that that's that's what you're looking for. You're looking for see the obedience to him and to be you know at the end of the day you want to hear this is my beloved son who are well raised you see and what pleases Yahweh is given him all the honor all the glory all the love that you can muster and by it all you got to do is just hew to the line that he's already said you don't have to come up with some mandatory thing you don't have to erect some edifice or or He's, he's just made it so simple to just be obedient to the gospel. You see, he was able to come in so low. He come out of this, this ontological state of perfection, showed himself to Moses and the prophet, and he came down all the way and died this death of an outcast dog. Don't, don't make that for naught. Don't make that vain. You see, give him all the glory that he deserves. You see, and you know, you just, sometimes you do, you struggle for words on how to put these things in, but but when you stick to the things that Yahweh has given you, that you've been assured of, you see, that's 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 pleasing unto him. You see, you don't, don't worry about having a mouthful of words or anything like that. Sometimes you just can't even get it out. But what you do have, be assured, you know, that those things came from Yahweh and be, be happy. <laughs> All right, so for those two words of encouragement, I'm going to have my seat all on our physical.
and all the previous speakers and everybody for your attendance and online. Thanks for joining us. We all stand for the doxology. Now on the end of the table to keep us from falling and the dumbest bottles before his presence with exceeding joy to the only wise young. Elohim, our Savior, through Yahshua the Messiah, our Sovereign, belong glory, majesty, dominion, and power for all time, now, and forever. And I'll do an announcement here.